So welcome to today's tutorial. What I would like to show you today is how we import a 3D structure of a molecule into PowerPoint to have it move like this inside of PowerPoint so that we don't have to do an animation or export an animation to have a video file to import into PowerPoint, but rather have the object right as a 3D structure in PowerPoint and control it there. To do so, we need supportive software. I chose to um, use Avogadro to generate the molecule, but unfortunately the file that comes directly from Avogadro does not uh, import into PowerPoint. So we need Blender as another supporting software, but Blender is only going to be used to convert the file into a suitable format. So even if you don't know Blender, use it just for converting and it's fine. If you would like to learn Blender, I would like to hurry, highly encourage you to do so because it's a really fun program to use also not only for scientific purposes, but in general. If you have not installed Avogadro or Blender yet, I would say let's go ahead and do that and come back to the tutorial when both software is running on your computer. The links to the download pages are in the description below as well. If you have both of them installed already, then I would say let's just go ahead and begin with generating our molecule. For this tutorial I chose to use Deobromin and of course you can use whatever molecule you would like to have, but um, I would recommend to start with the smiles because it's just an easy format on how to uh, copy paste just the, the molecular information into um, software. So I'm just going to look for the smiles, copy that, open a blank version of Avogadro, then you just use build, insert, smile, there is a smile already inserted, insert the smile you just copied and click OK. So now it's important to actually get rid of those blue bubbles over there that are above your um, atoms. To do so you can just use the, the um, select tool and right click next to the molecule, then all of those bubbles are gone. If they are still there, you would export them as geometry as well. And that's of course something we don't want to have. What I normally do when I import uh, a molecule into, um, into Avogadro as a smiles, I do a very quick energy minimization. Um, I just recommend that because it relaxes the molecule a little bit. And sometimes it depends on the complexity. It can have a very weird conformation. So I would highly recommend doing that. Uh, in that case, you just click on the tiny E over there, which is the auto optimization tool. And then you just say start. Uh, in my case, you see there is not much that changes because the molecule itself is quite rigid and, orient and the orientation is quite, uh, quite nice. But I just leave it like this for a couple of seconds and then I click stop again. And that is all we are going to do in Avogadro, except for exporting, of course. Avogadro has another advantage over other visualization software like Pymol, for example. You are able to display double bonds nicely. When everything is nicely um, minimized, I go to File, Export, and then you choose the last option, VRML. Navigate to the path where you would like to um, to save your file and then you just click render. Render in that case means saving and that is everything that we need to do in Avogadro. I saved my file already so I'm just going to exit. After that you go into Blender. If you are not familiar with Blender also don't feel stressed. We are as I said just going to use it to convert a file. The only thing that you need to do is you need to select your camera, your cube and your light and remove it. You can do that by just box selecting everything and press uh, delete and all of those objects are gone. Then you go to file, import and uh, navigate to the option where VRL or X3D is present. Click on it and then you just navigate to where you saved your file click OK. And what you get is now um, the molecule that you previously uh, generated with Avocadro. What you um, see here in Blender, so by the way, if you're new to Blender, 
and you would like to move around in the 3D space, you can hit your uh, mouse wheel and just drag your mouse and then, then uh, you will move. So what you see in Blender here is first of all, our atoms are not smooth and so are our bonds. And in addition, there is also a default view which is imported from Avogadro. We don't need that, so we just select it and hit uh, delete again. For smoothing out our molecule, we can uh, fix that in Blender as well. You could import it uh, into uh, PowerPoint as it is, so some sort of style element, so you could keep it like it is here, but if you would like to have a smooth visualization, I'm going to guide you through that as well. To do so, you box select everything again. Here it's important that one of the elements is not uh, uh, highlighted in the dark orange, but in a lighter one. And to do so, you press just shift and click on one of the elements, doesn't matter which it is. And then you do right click and say shade smooth. So now all our atoms look nice, but if we zoom in, which you can do by using your mouse wheel, we see that uh, the bonds look a little bit off, but we can fix that. So don't worry. We fix that with a modifier. For that, you go to the menu on the right, where this little wrench icon is. You click on it and then you say add modifier, generate, and then you go to edge split and you just click on edge, edge split. So seemingly nothing happened now because that modifier is only applied to your uh, atom or in that case to the atom that I selected here, but the rest is not affected. But we would like to copy just the modifier to all the elements. The atoms themselves would not need the modifier. It's only the bonds that need the modifier. But uh, since it's faster and it doesn't matter anyways, we're just going to apply it to all the objects. And you do that by hitting Control L and then you say copy modifiers. And as soon as you copy the modifier, you see that the bonds now look sharp again. And if I click uh, and deselect everything, you see that everything looks nicely. So the geometry is basically cleaned. And that is everything you have to do in Blender. So there is nothing more except for the styling. But this is something I'm going to show you at the very end. So we are going to go back into Blender again and do a little bit of styling um, because it's not necessary for the workflow, but it's just like a, a bonus thing. Then you go to File, Export, and you choose Wavefront Object. Save it wherever uh, you would like to save it, and then you can go directly into PowerPoint. I'm just going to open a new file in PowerPoint, just a blank and empty uh, presentation. Delete everything so it's easier for us to navigate. Then you go to Insert, 3D Models, this device. Navigate to the file, uh, to the location where you saved your file. Select the file and insert it. And now you see it looks like an image, but if you hover above the object, it is actually a 3D object. So you can manipulate the orientation of that object or the position of everything in 3D. You could make it larger, you can make it smaller. All of those things are as it is, as it would be for an image in PowerPoint. To have that smooth transition between um, the states of our 3D object, what I normally do is I just position the object I would like as, as I would like to have it on the first slide. Then I just go and duplicate the slide. And then I move it around, find a different size, find a different position as well, however you would like to have it. And the key is to select both of your slides, go into the transition menu and select morph as the transition between the slides. And if we go into the presentation mode and see how that works, you see that now the uh, transition between those two positions and orientations of the molecule are automatically and smoothly calculated. And that is really it. So this is all that's, let's do it. You just need to um, trans or uh, convert the file into something that's readable in PowerPoint. And that can be easily done with Blender. 
So to give us an idea what our molecule looks like, I would recommend to go into the cycles render engine. So you go to the icon render over there and select cycles. I'm going to use GPU to compute because it's faster for my computer. And then you had hit set on your keyboard and go into the rendered view. So everything is a little bit dark now. So if we go into the world tab and just make it a little bit lighter so that our colors are nicely visible. With that, you can now manipulate the molecule as you want. So for example, I would like to change the blue of the nitrogen atoms. Then I go into the material tab and you see there is a standard material that is applied to, um, uh, to all the atoms. And uh, to make it really a, a drastic change, I would, I'm going to use a very light uh, blue for all my nitrogen atoms. So you see the downside is that every atom has an extra material. So it's not that you change one nitrogen and all the nitrogens are going to change. You have to select uh, them separately. So the way I normally do that is uh, I change the color for one of the atoms and then I select all the other elements that belong to that same color by holding shift. And the last object I select is the one that I changed actually. And then uh, control L again. And now it's, uh, I just say link materials. So now the material is applied to all of those objects. So let's say you would like to highlight one atom as well, that carbon atom here, for example, and I would like to have it drastically darker. That's something I can do as well. Or you could even get rid of all the hydrogens if you don't want them. So you could also delete them in uh, Blender uh, instead of having them delete in, in Avogadro. Um, what you can also change is, so if we look at the material, it is rather rough. So you see that um, the roughness here, that means it's not really shiny, is turned up. So if I go down with the roughness, you see that there are reflections starting to happen. And a bit of that styling can be translated into uh, the molecule that you import into PowerPoint as well. So I'm just going to export that molecule as it is here. Uh, and let's see how it looks like in PowerPoint. Let's, let's do both on one slide so that we see the comparison. So we go to Insert 3D and the new molecule. And now you see a couple of things uh, can be styled. So as you can see now, the blue is different than the one that we had here previously. Uh, colors are a, bit, a little bit tricky. So you see, even though in Blender, um, the carbon here, that one looks drastically more dark. This one is a little bit uh, lighter. So that would involve a little bit more of trial and error, I would say, so that you go back and forth and back and forth with the styling. Um, but we nicely see that the reflection actually, that looks quite, quite cool, so that we have some sort of reflection going on there on our nitrogens uh, versus all the other uh, atoms are yeah, still quite uh, matte. Good, so I hope that tutorial was helpful for you and uh, I hope you have fun styling and importing your molecule into PowerPoint and see you in the next tutorial. <laughs>